interesting spot for a fine hardwood dining table. Yeah, Have outside you lost in the, your marbles. Or? Outside in the middle of winter in Canada, uh, I'm actually going to be refinishing this table. Uh, I've got a bunch of things I'm in that's in the shop, and I'm, I'm finishing them now. I'm in the process of finishing them now, so I want to do the dusty work outside here. I don't, I don't always sand wood outside in the middle of a Canadian winter, but it's a nice day, and uh, I thought that you'd appreciate learning. The, the tips and tricks for finishing a tabletop. The thing about a tabletop is that the surface is so prominent. So if there's any problem, if there's any bubbles or brush strokes or whatever, that's gonna be an issue. Another problem, another challenge with tabletops is that when you finish them with a film forming finish, which this top is finished with, eventually it wears out and you can't really repair it. You need to strip back to, to, to bare wood and start again. So. I'm going to be sanding. I'm going to be showing you how to do that properly on a tabletop. And then also we're going to be finishing this with a repairable oil finish. So instead of going through this rigmarole again, uh, we can just rub it down by hand and put on another coat of oil and make it look as good and as new again. So nice looking and repairable. That's the name of the game here. Almost perverse that you're about to take that aggressive belt sander yeah. to this. Yeah, the, the, this finish isn't all that bad. Uh, I mean, if you look closely, you can see some some cracks forming, some age cracks. I don't know if you can see them in that light. I can see them pretty closely here. Yeah. Little age cracks. We did a little homeschooling with our youngest daughter on this table, and uh, I think she's done some vandalism here. I think she got bored or angry. I. What, why are these holes? pears like this all over the place uh, near her when she was homeschooling I had a stapler that shot in u-shaped staples for holding cables down so I've had a talk with Ellie about that really she stapled the tape well look at how consistent these <laughs> the spacing is right it's exactly the spacing of those staples so. you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes no I don't think I'm gonna start with a belt sander with the green if this was a tabletop I was making from scratch and there was some, some mismatch from one piece to the other, you know, one higher or lower than the other, I'd probably start sanding cross grain. It, um, it leaves scratches, but it removes wood very quickly. And then I would finish up with the parallel grain sanding. But I'll just go right to the parallel grain now. An 80 grit belt. That's a good starting grit. I'm going to sand all of the stuff off on the surface with this. And then I'm going to do the edges probably with a random orbit sander. And then I'm gonna go over it again with 120, 120 belt on the top, and then do some hand sanding and maybe some sanding with a finish sander. So here we go. That's gonna work fine. I'll just keep working at that, but Notice here, we've got some things going on. This is bare wood. And then this is where the a little bit of the old finish remains. You can see the cracks that have formed in here from age as that finish has aged. I don't want to take off any more than necessary, so I'm going to be watching for that color difference as I go. So I've finished sanding with the 80 grit belt and I'm really quite pleased that that those little um, vandalisms that are uh, that, that someone in our house did are gone. Uh, the deepest one was here and I think it's going to pretty well disappear but all that other stuff is fixed. I did that with the 80 grit belt, belt parallel to the grain and then I switched to a 120 grit belt to bring the finish up a little finer. My next step will be to use a 180 grit sandpaper in a finishing sander. Um, this is a random orbit sander and I have been using it along the edge to get rid of the finish. First with an 80 grit disc, now a 120. One of the things about finishing a tabletop is that I never use a random orbit sander on the tabletop because the, the action of the, abrasion, of the abrasive 
is, is swirly in shape and it will leave swirly marks behind. You won't see it so much until the finish goes on and then you'll see it and then it'll be too late. Now I'm just gonna refine the edge a little bit more with this pretty big random orbit sander. I will remove the scratch marks on the side. There's not gonna be that many and it's not that prominent. See, the, the thing about a tabletop is that the finish, the surface is so prominent. That's why you have to be very particular. So this is my uh, trusty quarter sheet finishing sander. Uh, I've, I've used the belt sander, 80 and 120. I've gone over the tabletop with 180 in this sander, and I'm just gonna go over it now with 220. Same procedure for the edge, and that will be it for the machine sanding. Then I'm gonna take this into the shop. I'm going to do some hand sanding parallel to the green, looking very closely at everything as I go. I'm gonna round the the edge very slightly with the hand sandpaper so that it's a little more chip resistant. And then we'll be getting to that oil finish I was telling you about. The thing to understand about the sanding at this stage is, and you wouldn't know it just by watching me, but when I'm going over, it's systematic from one end to the other, and I'm looking very closely everywhere to make sure there's no finish remaining or no scuff marks or scratches or anything like that. That's how you get a nice finish. It feels super smooth. There's not a cross grain scratch anywhere on this. I think it's going to turn out really nice. So now I've got the tabletop in the shop, and I'm going to be putting on that oil finish. It's actually a, a, a varnish oil, so it's a mixture of linseed oil and varnish. But it behaves just like a true oil finish because you apply it, you let it soak in for about half an hour or an hour, and then you wipe everything off. So it's just the stuff that soaks in that you want to be on the wood. And you repeat that process you know, at least three times. I think for a table like this, we're probably gonna do four or five coats. It takes a long time, and the instructions say to let it dry for 24 hours between coats, but it takes longer than that to dry between coats. So it, it's a process. But the beauty is that it, it affords terrific protection, and it's also repairable. So if this table was in the kitchen and it was getting kind of scuffed and scratched, we'd go over it with a rubbing pad, vacuum it off clean, and then right in the kitchen apply some more of this. And it's, like I said, highly repairable, which makes it way better than any kind of film forming finish. So let's get to work. So our job right now is just to get the oil on the table. So we don't have to be very neat about it. We just need to put it on and brush it around. Uh, quite thin, really. It's a lot thicker now that it's going to be but uh, boy that oil sure brings out the wood grain looks great so we'll just go over the whole table make sure everything's wet and then we'll go away for about an hour and come back with some rags and wipe off all that we can so i'm really pleased and surprised at how this grain has come to life since the oil is on uh, it's it's wet and shiny and not very smooth looking right now, but that's okay because as I said before, we're gonna be wiping all this stuff off after you know 30 to 60 minutes or so. One of the things to keep in mind here is that the wood absorbs this material at different rates. I mean, it's all pretty saturated on the surface right now, but you see, there's a spot, thirstier than, than other spots. Uh, where else can I find one? I think that's the most prominent one at the moment. I want the surface to stay wet, so in 10 or 15 minutes I'll come out here again with the brush 
and just push some of the liquid onto the places that are thirstier and that have kind of dried out a little bit because the, the job here now is to saturate the wood grain, the wood pores, um, and then wipe it all off and then let it dry and repeat the process again to build up this, this oil layer. So I've applied three coats now and I've let it dry actually for four days between coats. And the, the way I know that it's dry is, is not because the surface feels dry, because it feels dry as soon as I finished wiping it, like you see here. I'm just wiping off this this fourth coat. But uh, the, the rag that I use is a great indication of when the oil actually dries, because for you know a couple of days after I put it on, it hasn't dried appreciably. And unless it's dried on the surface, you're not going to be able to build anything uh, in the pores of the wood. Not that you want a film, but you do want all the pores saturated. And that's what we're doing here. So I'm not actually wiping with my full force here. There's a tiny bit left on the surface. But uh, that's essentially it. I will go over this later when it's when all the coats are on and it's dry dry, I'm going to go over it again with a buffing pad just to give it a final little bit of smoothness and then it'll be good for a couple of years of hard use. So thanks for joining me this week. Subscribe, hit the notifications bell, like if you like the video, and check out my website in the description box. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter there where I talk about all kinds of stuff like this and more. So thanks again. See you next week.